Okay, high school ceramics, we are on day two of building your personality slab boxes. Today, when you find your slabs, hopefully they should be in a leather hard phase. They should be feeling a lot stronger, okay? Today, what we are going to do is use these slabs to build our box. And when we do that, you have to put them in certain orders. If you noticed, when you were tracing these, one of your stencils said outside slab, one of your stencils said inside slab, okay? Whenever you're building a box, you have to consider the thickness of the slab. So because of that, we will have some different dimensions based on which slab goes inside of the other slab, okay? So the first thing you need to do is grab one of your outside slabs. That's going to be one of your four inch slabs, okay? Hopefully you wrote four inch on there or you wrote three inch on your three inch, so at least you know the difference between the two of them. I have three written on both of my three inch ones. Okay, so now I'm going to grab one of my four and start with that on my canvas board. I have my tray with my um, paintbrush and my slip containers. Make sure you're checking these so that they have enough water for you. Okay, today what you are doing is I am going to be scoring the end of one side of the slab and the inside front of the other slab, okay? The best way to do this so we don't overscore or score a place we don't want it to be attached is I'm going to trace a guideline first. So notice I'm taking my three inch slab, actually this is my four inch, see, that's why I gotta watch, okay? I'm taking my 3.5 inch slab. I'm going to place it on my four inch slab and I'm holding it level with the outside hand so I have an L shape going to take my modeling knife, make sure the end of your 3.5 inch slab is flush with the end of your four inch slab. So it should look like this, okay? It's not like sticking out. It's not on the outside as it, it's on top of the four, okay? And I'm making sure it's flush, which means it's even with the edge of the four. Then I take my modeling knife and very carefully, because you just want to make a mark, I'm going to trace along where that slab is, okay? So when I remove it, it looks like this. All I've done is made a line that's the thickness of my slab, so I know to only score within that space, okay? Now I'm going to take my modeling knife and score. Please, please, please think about scoring a little deeper than you might normally score, okay? Because these need to be attached. Okay, now I have scored inside that space. Next thing I'm gonna do is score on the wall or the thickness of my slab side, okay? A nice thing to think about is making X's. Go down one direction diagonally, go down the other direction diagonally. If you really want to make this faster, I can get some forks for you. That's the, definitely the easiest way to score. I'm just using what we already have, okay? Now I'm gonna take my paintbrush, dip it in my slip, apply the slip to that scored area on my four inch slab and apply it to that scored area on my 3.5 inch slab. Be a little over generous with it. Okay, now I'm gonna take my three, attach it to the four, make sure the end is flush, and press it down so that I can see the slip going through the seam. So I'm gonna push that up here so you guys can see. You should be able to see the slip oozing through the seam of where those two boxes are jointed, okay? If you don't see that, then you might have air trapped in there and you don't have a good seal. So make sure you're doing that. I'm just gonna smooth it. You will be able to continue to smooth these uh, out as we are building them. So don't be too concerned now, just make sure that you have that slip oozing through your seam and that it's flush, okay? We don't have to worry about it being pretty at the moment, okay? Now, because again, this is my outside slab and this is my, uh, this is my outside slab, this is my inside slab, make sure to grab your other three inch slab. Do not get it confused with the very similar but different four inch slab, okay? Because these are going inside and on top of the slab that will be the outside. 
All right, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna place it so it is flush. I'm gonna take my modeling knife again, trace alongside, score. And score here. As you can see, I'm getting a little more generous with it. Because your clay should be in that slab phase right now, you shouldn't have to worry about ruining the integrity of the shape of your slab if you score a little heavier because your clay is firmer. So what we are doing here is creating an L joint. And you can see that from here, it's a term used often in architecture because it looks like an L, okay? And now I'm gonna add my other L joint to the other side, okay? I'm also going to press it down, try and get it as flush as you can. And press it down so that slip is coming through the seam. Okay, I do take a little bit of time now and just sort of smooth out the seam with either your fingers or you can use your paintbrush. It will be harder to access these once you put your other wall on. So take a little time and do that here while you can reach them carefully. Okay, now they're starting to bow a little bit. That's just because, well, this has all been done uh, today. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is take my final slab, same thing, I'm going to score both sides. If you're like wishing that you could know how thick to score, you can take your other leftover piece, which is just a square, because they should all be the same thickness due to the fact that they were rolled on a slab roller that was measured out with the masonite panels, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and give myself that guideline so I know where to score within, okay? And you could also have done this already with your same size slab. And again, we're going to score. Be careful that you are only scoring on the front side where you've made your marks. Don't be scoring on the sides. That's gonna be something that's a part of the outer exterior part of your box. You wanna make sure you keep it as level and smooth as possible. Okay, now I need to score these final slabs at the edge here. And if you want, you can use the hook of your, of your modeling knife. Sometimes it gives you a little bit of a deeper score. It's up to you. It might seem kind of silly to spend this much time on the scoring, but when you think about the fact that this is literally what's gonna hold your box together, it is worth taking some extra time. Okay, and I'm going to get my slip really soaked in there as best as possible. Okay. Again, if your slip is getting too dried out, make sure to go get more water. You might want it more water down for when you're attaching these very thin pieces together. I'm gonna to grab my other one here that has a little more water in it. So I don't have to stop filming. You always make sure to water it just like you water your plants at your house. Or if you're like me, you forget. And then when you see them wilting, you're like, oh, I better water it, okay? So now I'm gonna place the scored side to the score side and really press and bring the other side over if it is warped out a bit like mine did, you can hopefully still bring them back together. It's just partly because you're building it all quickly. So I'm doing the same thing here. I'm pressing my sides together so I can see the slip oozing through the seams and getting that tight seal. Okay. So this is where I will leave you guys for this day. If you get to this phase, that's great. You're probably going to not have time to do your ends. I will make a separate video for that. You can spend some time smoothing out your seams and just really getting things attached. Be careful that you don't push down on that slab. As you can see, it's already starting to bow just slightly. So you have to just really be ginger with all this stuff still.
I'm gonna go ahead and stand them up. It's a little stronger when you stand it up because you don't have the heaviest or widest part of your shape that is unsupported. You actually have the thinnest or smallest part of your shape, which is your square. And that's going to be a much stronger way to stand it once you get it to that point. Okay, so if you get to this phase today and you have your four rectangle pieces slipped and scored, great. Now take some time and just really, what I'm doing here is just contouring the corners so that they are stuck together strong. And by putting my fingers on either side of that corner and just kind of running it along there, I'm sort of reinforcing that clay a bit. And that's a good thing to do. All right. You will wrap these up in your plastic bags then for the end of the day.